Um, it's so great to see everybody here today. Um, I see a lot of, of faces that I, I know, and we're also being joined from people from outside of the American Canoe Association that also have a vested interest in our paddling communities. So we know you're all really busy, and we're very, very grateful that you're choosing to share 45 minutes or so of your day with us. So my name is Erin jones Avney. I'm an ACA Coastal Kayaking Instructor, um, and I'm an organizer for an ACA working group that is formed specifically to address issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion within the ACA. Uh, I wanna say right off the bat that the purpose of this working group is really to center and elevate the voices and ideas of historically marginalized, marginalized people and paddlers, like black people, brown people, indigenous people, people of color who have not always found our paddling communities to be safe and inclusive spaces and might struggle to see themselves within the ACA. Um, the ACA's mission and statement, as, as many of you probably know, is to serve the broader paddling public and to make paddling instruction and education accessible and to expand paddle sport to people of all abilities and to the underserved. The ACA is 140 years old. And so unfortunately, like many, many organizations, who that public is has historically been very white and very male. There are definitely things that we can improve on. Things like board diversity and integrating diversity and inclusion training in our instructor and IT curriculum, exploring how resources are shared and how limited program funding is allocated. I'm sure that many of you have come with your own ideas and we are really excited to hear those. Um, I've been lucky enough to have spoken with several of you individually over the past month or so, and I have to tell you, every time I hang up the phone, I am so excited and inspired by the work that is already being done all across the country, people reaching out into their own communities, doing this work and making um, places for, for people of all backgrounds to come together and paddle safely and um, you know, love in the water. So we're hoping that today uh, we can support one another and network and learn from some people who are already doing this work and that we can make sure that the ACA recognizes this huge potential our organization has to really live up to our mission. I can't promise that this change is gonna be easy or fast, but I do promise you that if you reach out to me, I will get back to you. And if you have ideas or frustrations, we are here to listen. Um, this is the first conversation of many, and we hope you'll stick with us today and help us understand what our next steps can be. So here we are. Let's get started. I'm going to turn stuff over to Jerry. Jerry James. Hey, y'all. I was doing some field work today out in the Dane Boone National Forest. So I'm pulled over um, at a rest area, virtual conferencing. Um, so <laughs> Sorry, I was meeting with some fellow biology, uh, biology friends um, for some work. But anyways, I'm really excited to be here, part of the virtual conference. I am been a part of the ACA since 2015. I am a Senate paddleboard and canoe instructor. I'm also the founder of the Explore Kentucky Initiative, which promotes outdoor recreation and environmental education across Kentucky. And I do also uh, a lot of competitive paddle sports racing through an organization I founded called the Waterman Series. Um, so... Um, also a journalist and I do a lot of uh, with uh, DEI diversity and inclusion work in the southeast so I'm really excited uh, to be here with y'all really excited to be a part of this working group um, so I'm going to read so what is so DEI diversity equity and inclusion so um, so diversity it's it's not it's it's includes but not include but not limited to race, color, ethnicity, nationality, religion, socioeconomic status, veteran education, marital equity is uh, the guarantee of fair treatment, access, opportunity, and advancement. Um, and then inclusion is, uh, is um, authentically bringing traditionally um, excluded individuals and groups into processes, activities, and decision um, policy making in a way that shares power, ensures equal access to opportunities and resources. Um, and if you are curious about, if you want to read more about that, you can go, um, I will drop a link in the chat or, yeah. Um, but so specifically for this conversation, and, and as you saw in that definition, DI is a very intersectional uh, 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 field of study. 
Um, and, but specifically for this conversation, we are focusing on racial diversity. And the reason why is, is, is and as like Aaron said, as it pertains to the American Canoe Association, um, you know, being that it's a legacy organization, legacy organizations like the ACA, the Sierra Club, um, traditionally very white, not diverse, and it's not per se intentional, but it's when you, when you have an entity that's been around for so long, you t- typically network with the people that are there. Um, so we becoming on the hills of this, the racial injustice movement and the Black Lives Matter movement that swept across the country this year, um, it really moved us, you know, it really moved me as a black man. Like I've been, you know, advocating fighting for my life and people like me, you know, lives all my life and, and, and do this work. And then, um, so seeing like, you know, especially here in the South, you know, um, the BLM, like in all these little towns, the rallies and stuff like that, it was great to, you know, see that America is starting to care more about these things. And then it was awesome to forge this working group with a bunch of people just got together and we started having some Zooms and talking about it and, and voila, we're here in front of y'all today. Ah. Uh, <laughs> so, um, what we're trying to what we're going to do here is it's a listening session so instead of us you know like hearing us you know talk we want to hear from you um and uh, we're going to split into uh breakout rooms and i think that's what kelsey is going to pick it up and explain yeah thank you jerry for that information i really appreciate it um like you said we're going to break out into um some rooms of about eight or nine people a piece um because there's so many people in this session it'll be really hard for us all to um, speak all in one room. So um, we're going to be in these breakout rooms for about 25 minutes, okay, give or take. Um, and I'm hoping um, that everyone in these groups um, kind of elects a speaker and a note taker. It's okay if those are the same person, but realizing that um, I can't record nor can I be in every um, breakout room. So I want to make sure that I capture. Um, as much as I can, uh, the things that y'all care about, that you're talking about, the ideas that you have, um, the examples you have, your experiences. So um, have somebody take notes on that stuff. Um, and then when we come back together from all these breakout groups, the speaker that you've elected within that breakout group will bring a summary about what your breakout room spoke about. Um, and we'll bring it all back together. Um, when the breakout room um, ends, you'll receive a warning that you have 60 more seconds, okay? So it won't just cut off while you're immediately speaking, but um, you'll have that warning there. So um, we have a couple of questions that we have wrote, um, excuse me, written to help you start a conversation. But of course, if you wanna branch away from those, uh, we would encourage that also. Um, so I'm gonna let Aaron talk about some of these questions and then we'll get started. Sorry, Kelsey, could you share those questions while I uh, wrestle with my computer for a moment? Sure. Thank Good you. See you now, though. It's so nice to see you. Welcome. Hi, everybody. Yeah, no problem. Okay. So, um, some of the questions or topics that you can begin to discuss in these breakout rooms in just a moment um, is what could we at the ACA learn um, from individuals and organizations that are already working with these marginalized communities? Okay, so what can we? learn from those of you who are already working in this space that have had really great successes or who have learned some lessons in other places. You know, what have you learned from those? Um, second question, um, what do you think that the ACA could or should do um, to invigorate diversity in power sports? That's a really big question, but again, your opinion for the ones that we're here to listen to. Um, third question is if your local paddling community could ask ACA for just one thing, what would that thing be? And lastly, last question, um, what is the largest barrier of entry that you see in your local community um, to participation in paddle sports? So those four questions, if you want to grab onto one of those, please do. Um, but if you want to um, prompt your group with something a little bit different, I think that's okay too. Um, so Aaron or Jerry, do you have any more comments before I enable the breakout rooms? Um, yeah, were we able to share those questions in the chat so people that are in the breakout will see them um i will work on that give me just a moment uh, from my ex just quick question are, are the uh, assignment of the groups is this random 
Yes. Mm -hmm. It's okay. random. So you're going to make some new friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, give me just a moment, please. I don't see a chat capability yet. Not enabled. In addition to that, when you go into breakout rooms, you can't see the chat that's happening in the main room as well. Unfortunately, I've experienced that with my classes. Thank you, John. And I love your background, by the way. <laughs> okay. All right. So these breakout rooms are going to begin now. Okay. And we'll tag you for about 25 minutes and give you a little bit of extra time. And then I'll we'll turn that off and we can come back. So make sure you elect a secretary within your group and a spokesperson. Thank you all. We were we were group one, and I think that's because our number one Beth was in our group as well. So that was just lucky. Um, but what we came up with was um, creating um, meaningful, practical, and sustainable initiatives over time. And time being a big aspect. Um, with a lot of our, um, we talked a lot about what we can do as a group um, through the lens of learning from other organizations and time kept coming up. A lot of our conversation came around getting younger individuals involved um, and creating those opportunities for them to have that. Um, but then also through inclusivity um, and that's through imaging on how we present ourselves as an organization um, with including um, diversity and just our imaging and the pictures on our website, even down to looking at the language that we offer this in. Um, you know, do we have these materials available in a different language for, um, you know, specifically in this case, the, the Latin American, the Latinx community, um, do we have Spanish stuff lessons and making them feel welcome, not just from a visual level and from an interpersonal level, but also down to a language and level, but recognizing that this is happening over time and that we're not going to get a 30% diversity rate next season, but that this is something that we just need to continually plug out over time. Thank you, John. That's really thoughtful. Thanks, group one. Um, group two, can you identify yourself? Um, I think we were group two. Um, I guess I'll just briefly kind of summarize. We basically spoke a lot about um, nonprofits and the fact that the ACA, it would be really um, beneficial if the ACA could partner with um, not-for-profits that are actually um, doing the work to raise awareness about the local rivers in different communities so that people from a diverse background who are not familiar with it can take an interest in also making sure that they have access to um, the river, making sure that they, they are getting swim lessons, reaching out to local colleges um, and uh, teachers and various different um, groups that you typically wouldn't reach out to just to make sure that you're not reinventing the wheel, but that you're building partnerships and that will go a long way in making sure that you promote diversity and bring people in. Um, we didn't get to talk too much about the specific barriers, but some of them did come up. And I think one of the barriers that we, some of, we had people from all over in our group from Tennessee to Seattle, I'm from New York, we have people from North Carolina. And so some communities are so white um, that it's not easy for them to go out and find those you know, people who are different from them. Um, and that could be challenging, but I think that if there are ways for the ACA to help those organizations, help those um, uh, lo uh, local paddling clubs build a network with surrounding areas where there are people that are different from them, whether you know, socioeconomic status, whatever it is, and just bring them in. I think that will make a difference. Um, I don't know if anyone else from my group want to add on anything to that. If uh, Michael or anyone want to jump in, feel free because I think we might have ten seconds left. If not, then we're good. Okay. Well, thank you, Group Two. We really appreciate um, your input as well. Group Three. Uh, group Three. There were a couple of Andreas in Group Three. Deb Page, Aaron, you're in there. 
or or no, I'm sorry. That was our group though. Whoever oh, was okay. Yay. I wasn't sure. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, well, like others have mentioned, one of the challenges that people in our group found was as a barrier, there's there's no access to gear. People there are many, many different programs with many different policies, and some offer free gear, some people, some offer gear for rent, and some offer gear only if you're a member of the club. In my case, my club has an open house in non-COVID times where people do have access to everything they need to get onto the water, but only at those times. Otherwise, you have to be a member, and the membership creates a barrier to entry. Another thing we talked about in several clubs is being able to swim. And someone else brought that up too, that the ability to swim is a barrier to entry, not for all clubs. Again, other clubs do different things. Our club has that restriction. Andrea's club did not have that restriction. And then something else that we brought up is the ability to do soft skills training. And again, addressing the diversity of clubs we were wondering if the ACA could provide some sort of soft skills training to handle different personalities and different needs, both mentally and physically, on the volunteer level, like with my club, or with the coach or instructor level that has that other clubs have. That, that would be something. We didn't actually come up with solutions. We were just trying to brainstorm about the problems and, and try to get a handle on what problems are really prevalent for us out there in trying to get community members on the water. Yeah, that's a great point. Thank you. And again, we're not going to figure out all the answers in one night, but the fact that we start talking about it and have all this input from so many different people from all over, that's really um, a great start to it. So thank you, group three. We appreciate you. Um, group four, does anybody know who you are? That's me, I'm Lynn Carpenter, I'm in Denver. We had people from Chicago, Philadelphia, Milwaukee, Atlanta, LA, we had people from all over. We only really got through two of the questions, um, but one was um, how to, how to, how can um, the ACA like coordinate with other organizations? And we thought about maybe having some example templates of some partnership agreements or some kind of agreements that we have on the ACA website. So you don't have to reinvent everything from, from you know, every time you want to do a partnership. And, and one of the concerns that my club, I belong to two clubs, and one of our concerns is, of course, liability issues. And so how, maybe some examples of how to get over that hurdle of the liability issue when you take kids out on the river. Um, you know, we always have a waiver, but, you know, a waiver doesn't always stop a lawsuit, and that would basically break mm -hmm. clubs, right? So, um, so that's one thing we talked about. And then the other thing we looked at was the barriers. So barriers we talked about was socioeconomic factors, knowledge, just like knowing that these exist. I mean, I mean, not everyone knows about SUP paddleboarding, that kind of thing. Um, paddling partners, how can, you know, you can take them out on the kid on the, kid on the river for one day, but then what are they gonna do, right? And so how do you get a community about for the, for the kids to keep going out there or the young adults, so you, or the adults to keep going out in a safe manner? Because I know when I first started paddling, I did some unsafe things that I didn't even know were unsafe because I didn't have people around me who could tell me so. Um, a lack of passion and interest was a barrier because if you aren't exposed to something, you probably won't develop a passion or an interest in it. Uh, the swim we've already talked about. And the other one was transportation, which is also, also have talked about. And so we were also looking at outreach templates. Maybe we could post some outreach templates on how to reach out to your community, what kind of organizations to talk to. And then lastly, um, pictures, uh, pictures of people of different races, different colors, different ages, different sizes, whatever, out there doing paddle sport activities and how can we, and not only ACA, but also in our own groups and clubs, encourage having pictures of all different people doing all different types of paddle sports. Lynn, thank you. I think that's a great idea. Thank you everybody in group four. Group five, can anybody identify your group? I think we were group five. Um, so in our group, we had someone who had created or co-founded Diversify Whitewater. And in 2020, they introduced 150 BIPOC, BIPOC um, boaters um, in two large events. Um, one of the questions that, that came up was how do we reach out to organizations like that? 
um, for the organization I work for, Chicago Adventure Therapy. Um, and can the ACA be a platform for all of these organizations? Um, so perhaps the ACA can facilitate um, that kind of networking um, and have kind of a central location where people can go to um, and look up um, what's available in their area. Um, one of the other things that came up was uh, the U.S. has been more and more diverse every year, and the diversity is growing, but not necessarily in the countryside. Um, is the ACA uh, planning on covering events in big cities? Um, could the ACA write more articles that include different types of people in different types of areas, not just in these remote areas? Um, and I think someone's already mentioned it, but one of the barriers is also the languages that this information is available in. Can we have it available in Spanish and other languages? Um, Chinese. Um, one of the other things we also talked about is uh, we need to learn what makes people feel comfortable, um, how to train guides in different walks of life, um, and essentially pe treating people with respect and not, uh, not using the savior complex, um, because that's not what this is about, um, really driving it with your passion for the sport itself. Um, and then another question that was um, raised was how can I start to develop a club with like-minded people um, to do these activities together in an environment that is comfortable and could ACA be one of those um, starting points for people who are trying to start uh, an organization. Um, one of the other things that came up was, um, you know, someone else worked for an outfitter and was interested in um, retaining the folks that they worked with already and how can we continue to get folks back on the water, not just make it a one-time deal? Um, and you know, do, can we talk to those folks, see what, the, what feedback they have for us and also getting the impact or the feedback from the people who, who we're trying to reach essentially. So that was the, pretty much the gist what we talked about. Thank you, Victoria. Um, so my sincerest apologies, everyone. I have to start another meeting in two minutes. And so we're going to have to, um, everyone who took notes or was planning to speak for the following groups, um, please keep those notes. I want to hear them. We want to continue to hear you. Um, but our time got away from us a little bit. So Erin, if you would take just a moment to tell everyone about our follow-up, and then um, I will bid everyone good evening. Sure. Um, everybody, thank you so much for coming. It was really exciting to come out of the breakout session and see twice as many people here as when, when I went in. So um, please, uh, if you have notes, if you took notes, if you want to take a picture of those and email those to us, um, please do. We're going to be following up with everyone after this session in the next couple days with a follow-up email um, asking for your ideas, for your feedback, for your suggestions, for your frustrations. We want to keep this conversation going. And we've also scheduled our next working group meeting for November 2nd at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. That's 5.30 p.m. on the West Coast. We're doing our best to make um, our meetings as timely, different times for different people in different parts of, of the world and the country. So um, please participate if you can. The login information for that meeting will be included in the follow-up email. And as always, um, my email address is erinjonesovni at gmail.com. Um, if you want to follow up, please do email the ACA. Let's keep this going. Thank you so much. Erin, how can we get each other's contact information? That is going to be something I'm going to figure out. And I'm going to get it back to y'all with that follow-up email. Because I, I know that we could be networking with each other. So we'll figure that out and we'll make sure that what we follow up for sure. I just wanted to say that um, next time we have a forum like this, it would be great to have the chat available because we can collect a lot of comments and information um, from people who aren't necessarily speaking. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. We'll definitely need to take that uh, into account and make sure that's available. So again, thank you everyone for being here. Your time, your experience is really valuable to all of us and we will follow up. And if you wanna join us again, you are welcome every time. Have a great Bye. evening.